I, I thought about this lesson, uh, and I was hoping to do it before my son went to, to Harding, because I, I thought it was meant for him with application to everybody in the congregation. Uh, we just passed the Olympics, and one of the, uh, one of the uh, races, that I, one of the competitions that I love is the, uh, the relay competition, when they pass the baton. And based on that, I thought, you know, my son, he's going to be one of the kids that I did not expect it out of my children. To, he will follow into the ministry. And that was a wonderful news to me when I, when I heard that. Along with the Bible reading back when we were back in John, uh, there is uh, John chapter 3, verses 26 to 30. It's a story there. We're going to read that later. But in the meantime, there is, uh, there is this... Uh, beautiful thing about the birds, the, and they call it the V formation, when the uh, birds fly in V formation. And I don't know if you ever wonder why they fly in V formation. And one of the things, I mean, there's several reasons, but some of the reasons that uh, people kind of elaborate on is that one of them is because this is the way that they conserve energy. And especially if you live in the south, you can see the flock of birds coming from the north going to the south, and there's a lot of them. And they always fly them in V formation. And one of the reasons they say is to save energy. There is this, uh, the upper voltage, uh, voltage that goes between the, uh, the birds, you know, they're pushing the air back. So they, they try to, if they do it like that, they, can't, they don't have to fight each other, you know, trying to move forward. The other reason the, the uh, people who study the, uh, the animals uh, is that this, they facilitate the orientation and the uh, communication between the birds. And if you know, if you're going 40, you know, maybe they don't go that high, you know, 20, 15,000 feet into the air, it's kind of hard to hear, it's kind of hard to understand. And the birds communicate by their sound. So is this helping their communication? Another one that they say is when the first one, when the first bird that is in the front get tired, he moves to the back. He moves to the back. So he get, he get a rest. He get a rest that way. And then, you know, they can pursue their, their, uh, their journey to the south. The bee formation is also seen in the, um, in the military, especially in the, uh, in the uh, aircraft, in the, uh, in the uh, Air Force. And we can see, you know, the, the Air Force use this and it has, has the same idea conserve energy, you know, help in the uh, advancement of the, uh, of the fleet. And, you know, when one of them, uh, you, know, the, you know, they want to go down, they can go down. They don't, they don't have to be on top of each other. With this in mind, John chapter 3, verse 26 through 30 reads as follows. This is John talking, uh, so, you know, somebody came to, to John and he say, you know, John, hey, Rabbi, that guy, the one that you were talking on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the river, is, is you know the one that you were testifying about. Look, he is baptizing too, and then everyone is going to him. And John replied, and this is what I want to do the emphasis. John replied, a person can receive only what has been given from uh, to them from heaven. You yourself, you yourself can testify that I said, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not the Messiah, but I am the one, you know, ahead of him. The bride uh, belongs to the, bri uh, the bridegroom. The friends who attend the bridegroom wait for the, uh, for the, uh, to listen for him. And, and, it, and it's full of joys when his heart, when he hears the broom voice. That, that joy is mine. And now, and it is now complete. And this is the phrase that I want to put together and do the application to this, uh, this illustration of the birth, the B-verse, the B uh, formation of the verse. He must become greater, and I must become less. Some of the translations say he needs to get bigger, and I'm going to become, you know, smaller. He's going to be greater. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, shorter. You know, John the Baptist knew that he needed to pass the baton. He knew that he's not the one, the Messiah. He knew that. He knew that somebody was coming behind him. 
that guy from the other river, the, the, from the other side of the river. And the B formation, we will uh, we learn about leadership. We learn about you know how one move out and somebody takes his place. We see our children; they're moving. Well, we see us. We're just going down. We're going. Well, I heard uh, um, uh, James, James LeBron James saying that he's not <laughs> way over the hill yet, but. Uh, most of us are over the hill. We need to look at the young children. We need to look at the youth. We need to move back at the, at, the, at the back of the path. We need to do what John was saying. We need to become less and let them be greater. When I see my son, that he's becoming a, a leader in the church, that kind of Encourage me, not only for my own uh, children, but for our youth here today, for all of the children that are in the church today. I mean, Steve is making, you know, compliments to all of the uh, new parents, you know, all of the children, all of the noise that is in the church, good noise, but that's the future of the church. This is not a church that is going to go south and die because there are other leaders coming up. We learn from this B formation that there are strengths in the church. And the strength is not, you know, it's not something big that we can see it, but, you know, like the, uh, like the river cutting through the, uh, through the rocks and becoming this, uh, this big channel. And we know that it's not because the water is powerful, but because it's persistent. I had the opportunity to go to the Grand Canyon and I stick that big hole in the ground. And who knows how many years ago it was level with the ground. But it's persistent. Now, what we need to, to do to reach to the future. Some of us will do it like, a, like, that, like this person that Jesus asked him or the, the, uh, one of the lessons that Jesus gave him. He said, do you want to go and work for me? He said, no, nah, I'm not going. Some of us are, eh, I won't do it. Some of us are, I can't do it. Some of us have the idea, I want to do it, but that's it. Some of us have the, uh, how do I do this? Some of us has the idea, I'll try it. Let me try it to see how hard it is. Some of us will say, I can do it. Many of us are saying, we will do it. And we are doing it. Yes, we do. Let's appreciate the lesson of the Lord, of John and the Lord. We are going down. Nah, we're not going to live forever. But this youth generation, this new generation, are the ones that are going to keep preaching the word. Because God has nobody else in, on earth to do it. If we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. We need to learn the B formation, conserve energy. Help each other and then let those take ahead to take the lead. Does anybody feel the need for prayer? Does anybody feel the need to uh, become a child of God or whatever your need might be? We can stand and we sing. <laughs>